Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to talk about a certain kind of brain tumor, but first a few things. If you like this video, please hit the like button at the base of your screen. Also, you can subscribe to our channel, Adventures in Neuropathology. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only. If you or a loved one have a question or a concern, please talk to your doctor. Okay, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about a certain kind of brain tumor, which is shown here. The surgeon will go and take that out and give it to me, the neuropathologist, to make a diagnosis um, by looking at it under the microscope. And this is what we see. So first of all, it's always a good idea to get an idea of where you are when looking at um, lesions under a microscope. And so there's a, there's a, a, a hint here of where we are, and it's right here. So this is a uh, choroid plexus. And so this is normal choroid plexus. If we look at it on high power, it looks something like this, where you have an epithelial lining that has um, kind of a plump cuboidal cells with these nice round nuclei. This is the choroid plexus, which is involved in making um, cerebrospinal fluid, which uh, is within the ventricles or the, the, the main holes within the brain. It surrounds and, um, and cushions the brain. Um, so the cerebrospinal fluid is, is a, a very important fluid, and it's made by the structure, the choroid plexus, which we see here. So the choroid plexus is located within a ventricle. Um, so you can have them in the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. So the fact that we see the choroid plexus here tells us that we are within a ventricle. So this is a lesion that is either within the ventricle or very close to the ventricle. And the next thing that we notice about this lesion is that um, the cells on, on low power here have a um, appearance that is pretty monomorphic. So each cell, um, tumor cell, looks very similar to the next. Um, and the next thing that we notice on low power is that uh, there's some areas that it looks like it's forming kind of sheets of cells, but there are other areas where it looks like there are little clearings, almost like little pink donuts surrounding these blood vessels. So let's take a closer look at this at, at this um, lesion. So again, the, the, there's a not a excessive amount of pleomorphism. So when you look at one cell versus the next versus the next versus the next, they all look very similar. And this is called monomorphic. Okay. So this is not a pleomorphic tumor. It's a monomorphic tumor where the, the nuclei of these various tumor cells look very similar one to the next. And the other thing that we notice is that um, there's a structure here. This is a blood vessel. And within the blood vessel, there are red blood cells. These are the red cells here. And surrounding the blood vessel is kind of this posse cellular or, or lacking um, cells um, a region. So this posse cellular region, and we can see it here as well. So there's a bunch of cells kind of in between these uh, structures, but right around the blood vessels, there's a, a paucity of cells. And... Um, radiating around the blood vessels are these uh, tumor cell nuclei. And so they're radially oriented around these blood vessels such that their nuclei are kind of polar oriented away from the blood vessels. And in between the nuclear, um, the tumor cell nuclei and the blood vessels, this region, this polycellular region of um, kind of a glial fibrillary um, processes that we don't um, see very well on light microscope, but on electron microscope, you can see them incredibly well. We get a hint of it here and here of these, um, of these uh, glial fibrillary um, processes kind of orienting towards the um, uh, blood vessels. So this orientation, this structure, this entire thing, the blood vessel um, and the radially arranged 
um, nuclei pointing kind of away from the blood vessels. These are called perivascular pseudorosettes. And they're called pseudorosettes because there are other rosettes that are true rosettes that we'll talk about later. But um, this is a pseudorosette because you have a rosetting formation or a radially arranged um, formation of these tumor cell nuclei, nuclei um, oriented around a blood vessel. Okay, so this is called a perivascular, meaning around the blood vessel, pseudo rosette. And perivascular pseudo rosettes are not specific for any one tumor, but it is very highly suggestive of an ependymoma. And in fact, this is what this is. So this is an ependymoma in which we see this monomorphic proliferation of these um, tumor cells that are kind of round to oval shaped. Um, very monomorphic, kind of forming sheets that we saw in, in the prior slide. Um, and in addition, it's very, very uh, common to see perivascular pseudorosettes within ependymomas. Typically, they are not um, very um, malignant looking, although you can have anaplastic ependymomas. But uh, your regular run-of-the-mill ependymomas, these are WHO grade 2 ependymomas. Um, typically, they're amenable to surgery. So if the, if the surgeon is able to get it all out, uh, the patient will have a, um, a, a very good prognosis. Um, and uh, typically, uh, patients with ependymomas, they tend to do well. Um, and again, one of the reasons for that is because they're located within the ventricles, and so it's easy to kind of, uh, relatively speaking, easy to, to get them out. So that is our discussion of um, ependymomas. If you like this video and would like to see more, please subscribe to our channel, um, Adventures in Neuropathology, and uh, that completes this discussion. Thank you and join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology.